All right. Hello, guys, and welcome back. It's been a little bit of time since the last episode of the podcast, but we're kicking it back in the gear with someone very exciting. Uh, we've got one of the sexiest voices in Halo right now. We have a Halo caster, content creator, father of four, uh, mouse and keyboard aficionado, which we're going to talk about a little bit as well today, uh, but someone that can probably say that all a little bit better than me. Active Halo caster and content creator. There we go. So we've got we've got active on today, guys, and I can't wait to have a bit of chat to him, get a little bit more of his story for you guys, and then also dive into hopes for infinite and all the glorious details that we've been getting uh, coming out from Halo at the moment as well. So thank you so much for making the time to chat with me today. Oh no problem, man. It's it's a pleasure, honestly. Thank you for having me. It's it's going to be great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start by quickly saying that anyone that's watched the podcast and knows how we kind of generally go through and talk about the story, it's gonna be a little bit different today because if you jump onto Active's YouTube channel, here's a wonderful video um, that goes through and does that general story that we normally talk about. You know, so we'll go through it in a in a brief detail here. But if you want more detail, I'd highly recommend you go and watch that video. It's about ten minutes long, and it's just a a really great understanding of how where you were. And where you're where you're at, uh, or where you were at that point, because you're further past there now as well. Oh, yes. Yep. So we'll do that. Uh, but to kind of kick things into gear, I like to do a few quick questions just so everyone can get to know you a little bit faster as well. Um, whereabouts are you from? How old are you? Give me some of those details. I am 33 years old. I'm from Rhode Island in the USA. It's the smallest state in the US, all the way on the East Coast. Uh, not much to do here, so don't travel here at all, but uh, that's where I'm from. Uh, yeah, it, it's a little tiny state. Uh, I've been throughout it all many, many times, so yeah, I, I got to get out there more. I got to like travel to the to the West Coast at some point. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I'm in Canada. I don't know. If, I think I've told you that now, and uh, I haven't even been able to get down to America once yet just because of all this yeah. COVID stuff, so yep. um, I think we've, we've got uh, December. We know the game's coming out in December. And then I think there's meant to be a land at some point in December. So I'm kind of saving myself for that to be at least my, my one trip <laughs> before Good I think idea. I yeah. for the land. But um, so, okay. Uh, and, and how old were you again? 33, 33 years old. I'm an old man. Old 33 man. and you've got four little ones. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. They add like 10 years each. So I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm up there. <laughs> yeah. And And how old's the oldest? Uh, he's 13. He just turned 13. Uh, he is, uh, yeah, he's, he's grown fast, man. He, he just sprouted up. He's going to be taller than me in like a couple months. Yeah. Crazy. Is, is he a gamer himself? Oh yeah. He, he loves game. He likes Minecraft. Uh, you know, they'll try to like all the kids will try uh, the kids that can't play games. They have a three-year-old that doesn't really play, but they'll try to impress me and be like, dad, look, I'm playing Halo. Like try to get me like all happy and stuff like that. But they yeah. mostly play Minecraft and Roblox and that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, it's, it's really awesome to see like a new generation and the games that they're kind of growing up with. But oh, yeah. that, it's one of the things I'm most excited about Halo Infinite 4 is that there is a generation of kids that this is going to be that first time that they get to see that Halo world, yeah, right? So Just remember that feeling. Uh, and I think in your video, obviously, you came in around Halo 2. That's mm -hmm. right. Yep. Yeah. And uh, what can you remember? How did you find Halo? Was it like through a friend or a family member or like who introduced you to it? So, so Halo 2 was like the, the, when I started like taking it seriously, Halo 1 was the first Halo I saw. I was at some friend's house and we, we went there. It, 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 my friend's grandpa's house. We went there, we were playing. This is the first time I saw Halo 1. I was like, dude, this is awesome. And then mm -hmm. I ended up playing it in school, which was really weird. Like middle school, we were playing in like, we had some breaks. We were playing in a room and it was, it was really cool. A whole room of kids. And then Halo 2, that's when I really like got into it. That's when I was like, okay, you know what? At this time, it was like the beginning of 2006. I was like, I'm going to make a living playing games when I get older. And everyone looked at me like, what do you mean? Back in 2006, like, well, you know, that's not a, really a thing. It was, but yeah. at a very, very small scale. And uh, people were looking at me like, you, you're not going to do it. That's not going to happen. But uh, Halo 2 was where it all began for me. Yeah. 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 Oh, I can't wait to dive into that a little bit more as well, because you did something that I would have done if I had have had... I think probably a little bit more guts at the time, but also if I had just had one or two other people saying, you know, do it. And I've seen, I know that you didn't even have that brand, but <laughs> it's um, yeah. I think that you're a fantastic story of, of dedication to kind of show people because, you know, making this decision to do it and then putting yourself on the line to really give it everything um, is, is awesome. Cause yeah, I mean, 2006, I think I hadn't even played Halo at that point, but 
when I played Halo the first time in like 2009, uh, it, it was probably 2010 when I started my YouTube channel. And uh, at that point, I was like, oh, I really wish I could do this every day of my life and just yeah. be a content creator, you know? And then, and then I ended up not doing it and fo- following other directions in life. But all of that led me to this point here where I can start trying to build an org and help other people to do it as well. So I love that, man. Everything happens for a reason. So yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, let's do some Spitfire questions. Favorite mm-hmm. color? Uh, red, 100%. Red. Yeah. So I was going to say red or blue, but that's, that's an obvious answer now. Uh, do you prefer dogs or cats? Uh, dogs, but I like cats as well, but definitely dogs. Definitely, definitely dogs. Do you have a dog at the moment? I don't. I really want one. Uh, I, I like a little best friend. I can kind of like go with me everywhere, but I don't have one currently. Right now we're renting out a house. When we end up buying a house, I'll get one. So Cool. Excellent. Do you know what breed you'd get? Uh, not yet. Honestly, uh, German shepherd would probably be, probably be at the top of my list, honestly, but, uh, I'm not positive yet on what I want to do. Yeah. I've got, I've got a, a border collie back in Australia. And, uh, but when I was making a decision, like what breed to get, uh, German shepherd was right up there as well. Cause they're just so intelligent. So loyal. You I know? love that. Both yeah. those things are so important. I think. And, uh, yeah, can't wait, man. I can't yeah. wait. Okay, so what else? If you could only pick between Overshield and Invis, you can only pick up one of those for the rest of your life, right? Mm-hmm. Which one would you choose? A hundred percent Invis. There's so much outplayability there. Like yeah, OS is nothing. If you can play an Invis correctly, OS is just obsolete. You know what I mean? So definitely yeah, Invis. Completely agree. And uh, favorite Halo weapon of all time? Oh, the sniper rifle, Betty. My Betty. I love Betty. her. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I call her Betty. The sniper is uh, Betty in my in my uh, in my stream. I, I have a name for because I use her so much on keyboard and mouse. So definitely sniper. Definitely love that. And uh, favorite Halo map of all time? Midship. Uh, I played yeah, thousands of hours of Halo Two midship free for alls. Thousands of hours. So definitely Halo Two midship. Definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I think I think that's a pretty good uh, sum up of uh, of things that people might not know about you. Is there anything else that you'd like to add that could be you know people wouldn't know about you already? I'm a drummer. Uh, I've been drumming for a long, long time, but I have to I had to take a little bit of a break because where we are and you know it's it's very loud. So uh, at some point, I'd like to get an electric jump set and get back into that. Every time I hear a song, you'll see me. If you see me at an event or something and the song is on, I'll be tapping on a desk or tapping on a wall or something. Um, <laughs> I, I crave it, but I just haven't done it in a little while. So, but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a drummer. I love basketball. I play basketball as well. Cool. That's pretty much it. Yeah, it's pretty much. That's really cool. And I think we've got, a, we've got a, in the Halo community, we've got a large number of people that are good with instruments. You know, I've had, we've talked to um, Ghost 10101010. And uh, he he's a fantastic uh, guitarist and actually he's a great singer as well. And then we've got uh, like Anthony, he's been on the podcast as well, super talented on guitar. So maybe we should do some kind of like Halo band thing. Oh, I would <laughs> love that. I would love that. Uh, Hunter JJX actually is in a band too. So that's another Halo person that's uh, played. It's, it's so cool. But, I'd love yeah. to just have a jam session. Just yeah. like at an event, just get in a room and just jam it out. That'd be so cool. I think we have to make that happen. I'm gonna keep. Oh, I'm gonna really pocket really. that. Pop, put that in my. Uh, I've got a word document of ideas like, of things to do. <laughs> gonna, I like it. Let's do I'm it. Gonna, I'm gonna add that one in there. And uh, so I think when you first started playing games, it was Nintendo that you came in with. Oh yeah, yeah. Nintendo was my very first system. I I just caught on right away. I played some like football game and of course Mario, Super Mario Brothers. I was so bad back then though. My mom had to be Super Mario Brothers 3 for me. She's the one who saved the princess because I couldn't do it. I was terrible back then, but but I loved gaming ever since then. And, uh, you know, got all the other systems, PlayStation, Nintendo 64. And uh, and then my first system that I picked out was Xbox. Yeah. And uh, that was the system that, like, I was at a store. My parents, it was my birthday. They said, PlayStation or Xbox? That's literally where all of this came about is me yeah. deciding Xbox. But my first game was not Halo. It was Morrowind, Elder Scrolls Morrowind. So that was my very first game that I picked out personally and like, you know, uh, for Xbox at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's a cool way to, to, to kind of uh, get into playing Xbox because mine was my friends were playing Halo mm-hmm. and I had to get an Xbox to play Halo. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think on the Xbox 360, I only had Halo and ha- oh. Halo 3 and then Halo Reach for the longest time. I don't think I even had another game. I think my brother maybe bought um, Oblivion. Is that an Elder Scrolls game, is it game yes. as well? Yes, it is, yep. Yeah, and got into that. But how, how long were you playing uh, Morrowind for? Uh, not not too long, honestly. Like, I got it. It was just something I liked, like, walking around. I really, I'm big on uh, our, our RPGs, and 
don't know if you know Ultima Online. It was an MMO. That was my very first like game that I got addicted to. And and so I've always been into those like RPG games of medieval games and stuff like that. So Morrowind didn't I didn't really play that too too much, but immediately got Halo 2 as soon as I could. And then onwards, I ended up, you know, fast forwarding. I got an Xbox 360, waited 18 hours outside of Best Buy for it. Obviously, yeah. Halo 3 didn't launch with uh, 360, but I, that's the reason I got it. And then I got ended up getting Halo 3 uh, shortly after that. So, yeah. Well, that that's, brings me to what I wanted to ask next. So uh, I am cutting out some bits and pieces of the story here because like yeah. I said, it's on the, the YouTube video. Um, but one of the, the things that I love the most is the first, that big free-for-all that you went to. Oh, yeah. Uh, so give me give me the quick run through of that story because I love the ending of it and I was when I was watching the video I had a bunch of questions that started kind of springing to my mind for it. Yeah, so sure. Give, give everybody that doesn't know the rundown on that story. Uh, so so just to kind of rewind a tad bit in Halo Two towards the end, uh, Killer N actually uh, friend requested me. If you remember Halo Two on Xbox One, you know when you get a friend request from a pro, that's a huge deal because their lists were always full. They were always max uh, friends list. So I had a spot open on my list. He sent me a friend request because I had beat him three times in a free-for-all. Killer N, I don't know if you're watching some of the top 25 Halo players of all time, but he made Ogre One's top 25 list because he won seven Halo 1 events in a row. Wow. And the guy was insane at Halo 2. So, you know, we got in a couple of Halo 2 free-for-all matches. At that point, I had really been practiced. He sent me a friend request. That's where things all started. Mm-hmm. I practiced a lot in Halo 2. Halo 3 releases, I get, I go crazy. I'm one of the top custom games played ever i think demon d was like first i think i was second or third or something uh custom games at the time is all we had because there was no mlg playlist or whatever yeah and uh yeah i just i heard about this cpl tournament and and i was working at blockbuster at the time and i had uh, put a lot of time into the game this is i really committed to wanting to compete and i said to my manager i got you know i gotta go to this tournament she says well this christmas season you can't go she says pick one and i said well i'm picking the tournament so goodbye so I left, I left Blockbuster. It's my favorite job ever. I uh, mm-hmm. went to the tournament. Um, I, I ended up, it was a very close first round because everyone was behind me. Everyone was watching me because uh, online I was this, you know, legend or whatever. I, not a legend, but I was really good online. So everyone wanted to see how I would do on land. Almost choked. I, I, it was so top two advanced, four players. Top two advanced always. I made top two by like two points. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like an interesting uh, caveat to the story because at the end, you know, the ending of the story, we'll talk about that in a second, but I made the first round by two points kind of went on through fear itself. I remember was in my game. I'm going to, I got to call out fear itself here. This is a exclusive divine mind podcast. Uh, he actually wanted me to give him kills in the game that we played together uh, because I was destroying by a lot. And he told me, uh, Hey, you know, toss me some kills or whatever. And I was like, no, and <laughs> I ended up winning. I think he ended up getting knocked out there. And, uh, and then, you know, we're in the semifinals and it's me, Soviet, uh, and then neighbor. And then another guy, I forgot his name to be honest with you, but it was us, it was us, uh, four and in the waiting in the, the grand finals was uh, strong side and ogre two. Yeah. So Soviet was Soviet neighbor, obviously the ones that were supposed to make it They're The top players in that, in that game, obviously. And, uh, it didn't happen that way. Uh, at the end of the game. I, I, now I'm going to be honest with you. I don't remember this because I was so in the zone. I don't know if you've ever been in the zone like that, but uh, my friends had to tell me this story afterwards because uh, when I ended up winning this, I looked at them and said, did I win with like a complete tired face? Like I had just woken up from a dream or something. It's crazy. It's crazy how it happened. So basically I, I LB our neighbor, um, uh, you know, and I had two shots remaining. I had like a, a disgusting strafe. I'm going to be just straight up honest here. Like I'm just telling you what everyone told me. Okay. Yeah. It was very hard to hit. So, um, and I was young, so it's not like that today. And so <laughs> I LB our neighbor turned around while Sylvia was shooting me. He got one shot into me. As I turned around, I four shot him for the win, like wow. to win the round, to win, to get into the grand finals. Sylvia got knocked out. So it was me, neighbor, uh, Ogre 2, and strong side in the finals. And I was doing real well until we get in, uh, on Guardian. Uh, and Ogre 2 has a shotgun on, on S2. I, I take the lift. I see as a shotgun, but I still charge him. And this is an interesting part of the story. I charge him. He kills me. And he says, a little aggressive there, Teats, out loud. Now, you know that Teats, you know, that's, that was my old Halo 2 name. Oh, okay. I changed to active. This is when I started getting into the scene. 
he remembered my old gamer tag when I think I thought I was a nobody. I didn't know if anyone knew who the hell I was. He remembered my old gamer tag and that blew my mind. You know, we're talking about the greatest of all time remembering me. Yeah. And I, 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 I got fourth. I, I completely <laughs> choked the rest of the tournament. It, it, it just destroyed me. Yeah. Completely destroyed me mentally. But that was the greatest experience of my life. Ogre 2 shook my hand afterwards and he said, no one thought you'd make it this far. And uh, congrats. And I said, wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was a crazy, crazy experience, man. Wow. Okay, so now I've got, I've got so many questions. I'm going to go with the, this one because I want to remember, I want to make sure that I get it answered. Yeah. So um, when, when, when he remembered your old gamer tag, right? Yeah. You were just thinking after that, how, why, why yeah. did you remember? Just- yeah, like how, how did he remember that? Like, how did he know? I know we play, we play some free-for-alls back then, but I figured I was just some random kid in his free-for-all game that got in because Killer N invited me. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I didn't think he remembered who I was, but he did. He remembered mine. And he, the, the fact that he used that, he, he's, this is, this is 200 IQ here. Yeah, the yeah. fact that he used that name and not my normal name, he knew that it would screw me up. He knew yeah. it. He's not stupid. And yeah. it did. It screwed me up, man. So, so that's that's some good insight, right? For any person watching this that wants to be a competitive player, is you know, not only do you need to be an excellent shot, really great shape, strafe, have a good map knowledge, but you've also got to be able to have that two hundred IQ play of remembering people's gamer tags after they've changed it, right? <laughs> for the in for the in person heckle at land, <laughs> <That's true. laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, because I can so imagine that just being enough, like while you're in that zone trying to concentrate, that's enough to kind of break it. And then you're just thinking in your head, like, why did he say that? Is, is, is my game tag say that? Like, how does he, you know? Like, yeah, like, and he, he didn't just say it. That's the thing. Like, you you know, Ogre too, like, a little aggressive there, Kate. Like, he yelled it. Like, yeah. this was a hype. T- the first place was 30 grand. It was a hype tournament. Like, it was a big deal. And yeah. he, he yelling, him yelling that at me, the crowd went nuts, by the way, the, the crowd, like, you know, of course they went, Oh, like, I'm like, <laughs> Oh, freaking a dude. This was the first game. This is a first or second game. I was like, I'm done after that. Like that was it. Yeah. Like, it, it was, it was, I was a mess. So yeah. Unfortunate. Well, that's, that's awesome. So the, the other things that I was thinking about, and, and like, I love this because I know that I've played maybe one or two semi-competitive competitions in Australia. Right. Yeah. So like not even a big scene and I've been nervous online. Like I'm not, there's not even people around. I've been nervous. Like my fingers feel like spaghetti, and I can't. Like I just my controller just falls out of my hands. Yeah. Uh, what does it feel like when you when you like not even that last game, right? But when you were playing to get into it, where you were kind of in the zone and you need your friends to tell you, were you nervous going into that? Like what's what's the experience? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So so that first game that I almost lost is completely nervous. I couldn't concentrate on the game. I was just focused on everyone behind me. Like what are they thinking of me? Like you, you know, oh my gosh, I missed that shot. They're gonna think I'm bad. Like. It was so stupid. Like back then I was so, I don't know. I, I don't want to, I wasn't confident back then at all. So yeah. I went into there very scared. And then um, I guess like as time went on, I just got more and more confident. And of course, you know, fear, that fear itself thing got me confident. And then I just, I started talking trash. Like I just, I just got straight into it. Um, that semifinal match, I knew it was happening before. Cause they had the list of like everyone's names you got to figure out at that time you got to figure out who's the real name who was who you know you didn't know everyone's real name so um yeah at the time uh before that semifinal match I prayed I I literally was in elevator I was like please like I was praying to God like please you know help me do well here and then I literally don't remember the game after right after the match started I completely don't remember all I do remember one thing when I out our neighbor he stood up out of his chair and said who is this kid I, I do remember that part but that's the only thing I remember yep. everything else was a blur and uh just thinking about it now it gives me chills man I miss I miss competing and it's yeah yeah do you think uh do you think you're gonna compete at all in infinite or is the content uh, creation lo- the, like side for you now I, I lo- a lot of people actually ask me this um I'm really happy that the tournaments are open to keyboard and mouse and controller as of right now, you know, they're open to everybody. I like that. Um, I don't know if I'll be good enough. I'm going to put a lot of time in if I'm to the point where I am good enough to maybe compete, then I will. Uh, but a lot of it, I would say, uh, unless something crazy happens, it's mostly going to be for content. It's mostly going to be for like, Hey guys, I'm going to compete, you know, wish me luck. I'm grinding, 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 trying to get good. Um, my biggest thing is casting. That's where I really want to focus. I want to be, you know, the, I, I literally want to be the best caster in the world. And I work every night 
to, to make that happen. And I've done a lot of VOD reviews with different people to make that happen. So yeah. that is my end game goal. Awesome. Awesome. So, so what, when did, when did casting now become a, a goal? When did, when did that come up in the radar? Were you like, cool, this is something I really want to give my everything. Uh, so I, I used to, for Halo 5, I, I was a pretty decently big streamer at the time. And I used to do a lot of sub wars and people would come by and we'd give out like a hundred dollars a week uh, for sub tournaments where, you know, it was a draft type tournament and I would cast it. And at that time I was a terrible caster and people were like, oh, we love, this is great. This is cool. Blah, blah, blah. So I kind of put it on the shelf for a while because I figured they just liked it because they were getting casted. You know, you got, you're on a screen, someone's casting you. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah. Um, but then the Halo 3 events started coming by and uh, the, the, the recent ones or whatever. And that's when I started doing it on my stream a little bit. And then the big thing that turned everything for me was the Talonol and Tommy Cost tournament, TNT tournament. Mm-hmm. A, I, was in, I was playing in it and I got knocked out. This all happens for reasons, crazy. I got knocked out really early and then I went and I messaged Talon. I was like, Hey dude, do you mind if I like jump in and cast with them? And this is the very first time that I casted a tournament with like 500 viewers at the time. Wow. And that's when I realized when everyone was gassing me up, they're like, Oh, you're made for this. Everyone kept saying like your voice is made for this, blah, blah, blah. That's when I was like, wait a minute. Like this is, this is what I'm supposed to do. Like, this is it right here. And, uh, since then, we've, you know, LVT, uh, that, uh, Lewis Vitae Productions has taken me on and God bless them because let me tell you, uh, they have really set me up for, for greatness with all the practice that I've gotten from them. Um, and yeah, now casting is like what I want to do. I mean, obviously, content creation still, but casting, uh, you know, for tournaments on the weekends is, is the goal. Yeah. So what, what was the feeling though of that first casting in front of five, like 500 people? Was Ooh. that something that you were nervous of or was it, or was it like, as soon as you started doing it, it felt like you're kind of in a zone and, and it felt like the right place to be. So at first it was a little bit nerve wracking because there was two of them already there. And you know, if uh, as a caster, you know, having two people and then being the third is, is a little bit rough to kind of jump in. It's just yeah. a little bit hard because usually you have a color and then a play by play, but the third kind of makes it a little awkward. So at first I was a little bit eh, and then I just started like, literally, I, I just took over. I, the, the body took over. I was just, I was in there and then we had the, like the hypest finals ever and everyone loved it. And it was just a crazy time. So um, yeah, the, at the beginning it was a little bit, but it got better. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Cause I, I, I've, I said it to you before we even started this, that I, I was doing the, I was gassing up just like everybody else. Because <laughs> I just, I think you've got, yeah, it's a fantastic voice for it, but your energy is just like, it's, it, it makes watching Halo even more enjoyable if that's possible. You know yeah, what I mean? And that's that. kind of what you want from a, from a caster, someone yeah, that like, you know, if, if I was sitting there just watching it on mute, I'd be enjoying it. But then when you unhit mute, when you, when you've got the sound on and you listen to someone talk, you want it to be adding to the gameplay and the experience right. of like watching Halo. And I think, I think you do a fantastic job of that as well. Everything you say, you say as well tends to be for a really good purpose. And it's not just like, you know, blending words together to try and connect things. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. So it's run me through some of the practice. You said you've been doing like some VOD reviews and stuff. Like what do you do to become a better ca- caster? So obviously, you know, doing the events is, is some great reps. Like the, that's the best rep you're going to get is just doing an event, going to an event or doing an online event. Um, but I do uh, reviews every night. Uh, I watch my past tournaments and I take a lot of notes. I have a notebook over there, just full of notes uh, that I take on what I need to improve on. And then I've got these amazing people. I've got Bravo. I'm not trying to name drop, name drop here, but these are just great people that have helped me uh, get better. Bravo has been on a consistent basis, taking two hours out of his day each time to sit there and VOD review with me. This is, this is a Forbes 30 under 30 guy who has no reason to help me, but see something in me. Hmm. And, and that's incredible to me. And then we got, you know, um, uh, we, the HCS producer, he's been helping me as well, trying to get me to, you know, think about it differently. So there's just a lot of things I need to improve on. Um, And like, let's just give you an example. When I first started casting, everything would be hype. Okay. Someone got a single kill. I'd be like, Oh my goodness. Look, I don't shot like, you know, I'd freak out at a single kill, but now I've kind of learned to develop the story. You know, I start off if it's winner's bracket round one, I'm, you know, we're going to be hype, but like if something crazy happens, but it's not going to be like nuts, you know, Um, because if, if I'm nuts, then someone gets like a kill tack. I can't go any higher. I'll be screaming like a girl. You know what I mean? So it's all about kind of like waving that in. And I've learned that. And, uh, you know, just a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, You know, just people have onset took some time with me as well. 
uh, people have just been helping me nonstop. Uh, you know, Garrett, who is part of LBT, has spent some time with me as well. And Nighty Night, just great people all around. So yeah, yeah, seriously. And so, okay, if you give us some insight in your own, you know, preparation and skill set, if you had to pick, you know, two or three things that you're working on right now to improve on, uh, can you can you be specific or what you're what yeah, you're so the, the the very number so there's the, we'll get, I'll give you two things. The, yeah. There's a lot of things, a million things, but two things. The number one thing right now is is pulling you in. Okay, I don't want you to ever step away from your screen, or I don't want you to fall asleep at an event. I want to pull you in based off of stories. Okay. So if like snipe down has won the last four tournaments in a row, but this tournament is looking kind of weak. I'm going to bring that up because I want you to see the story unfold as I'm casting the game. Mm -hmm. So it's all about that. It's all about kind of creating a storyline so that you are stuck to the screen and you want to see how this story unfolds. That's the biggest thing right now for me. And then secondly is kind of knowing when to stop talking, like knowing when to cut a moment um, for instance, just uh, as an example, Bravo had mentioned there was a moment where it was my best casting moment he's ever heard, but I extended it too long. Like I kept going when I could have just cut it and just been done. It would have been perfect. Yeah. I kept going. And that's something else I'm working on as well. But there's a million things, honestly. Yeah. yeah. But that's awesome. That, that, I mean, it, that's a really good amount of detail that I'm sure people don't even think about when they're listening to a caster, right? Yeah. They're just kind of like, this person's just, you get this incredible ability to talk that they don't realize. But that leads me to another question is, you know, for the first one where you're talking about creating a story over, you know, comp you know, it's a, it not just what's happened in that competition, you know, right. how much, how much research or like how much time do you spend making sure that you're, you know, um, where these players have been and, you know, their performances like leading up to the game that you're casting. Is that like, how much time do you spend doing that type of thing? So before a tournament, I'll spend a lot of time. But to be honest, recently, I've been trying to go way back. Like, you know, this top 25 has kind of sparked some things for me, the top 25 players of all time. I've, I've gone back and I, I want to learn at least the players that are still playing the game. I want to learn what they've been through, what events, and I kind of want to study that because I want to be able to, on a cast, say, hey, Snipe Down is, you know, has an average placing of four or five. Yeah. And, you know, how will this event impact that? Or, or for instance, Lethal, um, he's, you know, number three all time on most people's lists. But if he wins this Halo Infinite event, he's going to go above Ogre 2. How is Ogre 2 going to feel about that? Those are yeah. storylines that give you chills. Like, those are the kind of, you know, the greatest of all time could lose his title based off of the first Halo Infinite event. That's a big deal, right? So um, those are the things I'm kind of working on right now, uh, mm -hmm. just to kind of get back into history, even though I watched him. I still want to kind of refresh my mind and, and really study those wins and all of that stuff so that I have that. But to be honest with you, a lot of the time your producer will shoot that information to you. Like Mr. Snow is part of LVT. He is amazing at statistics. He shoots info at me and all the casters all the time. So, wow. yeah. yeah. Again, that's some, that's a, that's a really good bit of insight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, okay. And so when you're thinking about ca casting in general, what do you have a moment, not for yourself, but like when you've been watching a competition from other people casting that, you know, something happens, right? And, you, and the caster just elevated that moment. Like, is there a favorite competition that you've watched where, you know, there's a, a moment like that that stands out to you? Um, honestly, there, there was one, but it doesn't really, it's not like a skilled thing that I'm looking at and be like, oh, it's just something that will never, ever leave my mind. It was uh, Sundance. And it was Halo 2. It was like 2006. I don't remember the tournament. I don't remember the game, but it was T-squared. And I think he went on like a rampage. Uh, he, had, he was like 25-0, and 0, I believe, or 20-0. Or it was a high number. And Sundance, he had sword. So, you know, you know Halo 2 sword. He was just slicing everyone up. Sundance could not speak. So he goes, T-square, blah, 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 blah. that's how he sounded. <laughs> and I'll never forget that because it was such a funny moment. I remember laughing so hard at the time. I'll never forget that moment where Sundance could not talk because T-square just kept destroying everybody. It was just it too was, much hype. It, it was too overload. much hype for him. Yeah, it was just so funny. But I mean, I, it's not really what you were asking for, but it's kind of no. a moment that I never will ever forget in terms of a casting moment. Yeah, 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 that's perfect. I remember this one, it was, it was very similar to that because everybody just was, it was just screaming, right? It was just, yeah. and it almost, it was almost taking away from what was happening on the screen because if you weren't a good player, you didn't quite know what was going on. Yeah, yeah. And, and the, obviously the casters at the time, I can't remember who was casting it, were just losing it. And I'm pretty sure it was a Halo 3 oddball game and Neighbor 
he's got the ball right at the end and he does that the jump in green onto like outside and then you can kind of go into the lift but like it's like you fake yes, on that little branch that on the tree yes yeah 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 and and he does it to like win the game right and so like i'm watching it got a good understanding of halo and i'm like listening to these guys just and they're just <laughs> they're just going off and i'm like are they, are they gonna win they're gonna win and then, and then, and then the win is like they do win, and then the kids have just lost it. So, like, at no point do you actually know what's going right. on. What you were just saying then reminded me of like of that moment because I just That's remember funny. being so hyped, and I've watched it back a, a hundred times and thought, I really wonder if the cast has watched this back and think, thought, <laughs> we have way too much fun with that. <laughs> it's hilarious. I, yeah. Now that you're. Now that you're saying, I have another moment. The goofy snipe. Do you remember that goofy snipe for for Warriors to win that game on? It was on the pit or something. That was incredible because he popped off, the crowd popped off, and the commentators popped off all the same time. I'll never forget that one either. That one sent chills right through my spine. That was a great play. Even like I've already been hyped for Halo Infinite, but just even talking right now about the casting and bringing up like I know, I I can't wait, dude. (laughs) I'm so excited for it. So, okay, so uh, the casting is something that is obviously you're working on it. It's great to get a little bit of, of background and everything for that. You've had lots of people helping you with it. Um, but the content creation is still something that's like super important for you. Oh, yes. Um, when it was obviously six years ago that you started doing the content creation. So I started uh, seven years ago. I started in 2014. It was, it was April 24th. Never forget the day. Uh, that's when I started streaming uh, full time that day. Yeah. Okay. And so, and was that, that was on Twitch? Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I can give you the, the little bit of the story, like a, a little cut of it, but uh, essentially uh, I, I, you know, I started on Twitch. I, I quit a full-time job. I was working at General Dynamics. Very, very uh, good place for a career. Um, you're set up for life pretty much. Uh, and I was miserable and I hated everything about, you know, the job. Um, I, I worked there for two years, miserable. And then, and then I decided one day literally got this, it, these things happen for a reason. I feel like I, I literally just got this, this overwhelming feeling that I had to quit in, in, um, unprofessionally, of course, I did not give my two weeks. Uh, I didn't, uh, it, it was, I had some money put aside and, uh, you know, and so I was okay for a while and I decided to give it a full go. And at the time affiliate wasn't a thing and yeah, here we are, <laughs> which is crazy. Yeah. Uh, but I, I love that. So what was the turning point though? I know you said you were miserable, but like, was there something that happened at work? Like, was it dealing with a really bad employee or a customer or yeah. like? Yeah. So, so, so essentially, you know, we're building submarines, right? So uh, at, the, at the time I was at a workbench uh, for building the little pipe systems for the submarine. Um, but because they needed my skill set elsewhere, they pushed me over to across the street, which is essentially you're on the actual submarine and you're working with the big pipe systems. But the difference is over there, it's very dark. It's very gloomy. It's very just miserable. You know, the weather, obviously, you know, if it's cold, if it's freezing outside, you'll be freezing. If yeah. it's hot outside, you'll be sweating uh, because the steel, you're working with steel. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was the moment. And then, and then just talking to everybody, you know, Liam, just like sitting there and, and, and speaking to people and them saying, I wish I wasn't here. I wish I yeah. did this. I wish I did that. I've been here for 40 years. I wish I would have done this instead. That was my breaking point hearing that for like, you know, I talked to people for a week straight before I made this decision about, you know, do they wish they were somewhere else or blah, blah, blah. And all of them answered the same way. I wish I had not stayed here for 30 years, but I was stuck. And that's when I said, Nope, I am not, I'm doing this. I'm going, I watched a stream Maximus black. I don't know if you know who that is. Um, he's a streamer, a full-time streamer that night. He was getting so much love and he, he was just he was crying and he was just, you know, that was the moment I said, I am done. It was risky because yeah. I had no sub button. No, you can't sub to me. Okay. It was only donations that I was going to make money. That's the only way. And I, ma- I didn't make that clear to everybody, but they knew they were very, very, you know, I got 700 followers in seven days because I made a big stink about it uh, on, on League of Legends forums. I posted player quitting $30 an hour job and the, the post blew up yeah. a riot employee mess posted on it and it just blew up. And that's where kind of everything started. Wow. And- yeah. And so, okay, so run me through the first few days of streaming full time. What's going through your head? You enjoying it? You're like hyped to see what's going on. Oh, I, I, you know what? I kind of, I look back and I get kind of sad because I was so on fire back then. Like I came up with a million ideas for 
different things to do. And I was, you know, and I'm trying to get back to that now with Halo Infinite coming up. I'm building, you know, an idea of what I want to do. But yeah, um, the first couple of days were were great. I had like, I think the first day I had like three viewers. The second day I had like 10. And then like week two, I had like 30 viewers. And then um, and then I had this, these two, I guess you can call them whales. They're, they're people that have money. Um, right now they're known as friends. They're not people that have money now, but, um, it, it was one guy who was named frostbite and, uh, and then, uh, another guy is named Jeep man. And they had a donation war and it was over $3,000 that night. And that's when I knew that this, I was supposed to, cause I was, I, I just knew I was supposed to do this. Like I was being carried you know, at the beginning, but there was a reason that they found my stream at that moment and I was being pushed and that because of them, because at that point I was running a little, we were getting close here, you know, where you know, it wasn't two weeks and it was like more like a month and a half in or whatever. It, it was, it was getting kind of, eh. uh, that was when things started to kind of blow up for me. And uh, yeah, I'm here right now because of them pretty much, I would say, and everyone else in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And so, okay, so that was about a month in, right? Yeah. So starting to solidify, all right, we're in the right track. We're doing right. it. Yeah. Um, how much longer until you got to the point where you're kind of like, okay, I'm, I actually feel really confident with where this is going. And you started getting a little bit more settled into the fact that this is working. I'm, I, can- uh, I, I ended up getting partner in September. So we're talking April to September. September, I got partnership. And that's when I was like, okay, you know, we're, uh, you know, five, six months in whatever. I got a partner, like this is the, this is it. And then uh, I got picked up by team 2G and uh, their uh, trick 2G is a League of Legends streamer. That was their team. Uh, they picked me up and uh, then I started getting the sponsor deals through them, through HyperX and a whole bunch of other stuff. And that's when, uh, that's when I knew. Um, but the, you know, that, those, that's all the good news. Okay. There was also a lot of bad in between that. And now, I mean, nights where I, you know, didn't sleep nights where I would cry myself to sleep. I'm, I'm a man, but I, I, I'll admit it. Like I was crying some nights because it's hard, man. Like I, I've got kids at that time. I had one or two kids. I don't remember, <laughs> but at that time I think of one, one or two kids and, and yeah, I had to take care of them. And, and it, it just got stressful because I don't have control over people yeah. subbing to me or donations. I do in a certain sense, but like I can only do so much. Yeah. Um, so it, it was very, very scary. There's a lot of ups and downs in this journey. And to be honest with you, out of the seven years, this year and half of last year is where things actually started being okay for me, where I don't have to stress as much. I still stress, but not as much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I I totally get it. So uh, what, what, not to focus on negative because I don't like doing that, but what are some of the, you know, experiences that stand out where you were like, holy shit, this is hard. Or, you know, those nights where you cried yourself to sleep, um, you know, First of all, it takes a man to, to say that type of thing, yeah. you know, but is there, you know, can you give us a, a little bit more insight on like, what were the things going through your head that you had to overcome at those points? Uh, there, there were times where, you know, income wasn't as good and, and it wasn't stable and there were, it was an up and down. It was up and down the entire ride for the whole seven years. It's been up and down, but some of the lows are very low, like borrowing money from my mom low. Like, you know what I mean? Like my dad passed away. So it's just my mom taking care of herself and she has to still pay all the bills that she paid with my dad and having to ask her for money at that time was, was not, it was a very, uh, shamed. I felt ashamed and, um, and it was just rough. You know, there were times like that. And then there's the really highs, the really high highs where, you know, things are really working out and you know, things are going great. Um, that was a big thing. And then, and besides finances, you know, viewership being low, you know, like, Oh, I had, you know, an average of 70 viewers this day. And then all of a sudden I have 30 today. Like what happened? Like, what am I doing wrong? Um, stuff like that. You just, it, it content creation is literally a roller coaster. It's hundred percent a roller coaster. Just to give you an example, I had 1500 subs last month. Right now we're at 500. I'm very appreciative of 500. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just telling you like it's a roller coaster, you know, um, that's just how it goes. And once you realize that, once you realize that you're at a low, that means a high is coming. Uh, and when you're at a high, you're at a peak, that means, you know, you're going to drop off a little bit at some point. Once you realize that, you'll be perfectly fine. You'll get through it. I've been very less stressed the past two years, mostly based off of my mindset. Yeah. 
Yeah, awesome. Well, I love that. And you've got a fantastic mindset. Your yeah. positivity and your energy, man, that's that's why this all works so well for you, you know, because other people feel that. And I'm sure that there are people that come to watch your stream that are having a shit day. And yeah. just that energy makes them go, that's a little, it's not as bad as it seems, yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I've had some messages, man. Uh, one guy, you know, not to get too dark here, but one guy had messaged me. I'll never forget it. I always, I bring it up, not often, but I bring it up when people ask is uh, he was going to commit suicide. And he said, you know, he had messaged me like a week after the whole situation. He said, I want you to know that you, you know, you let her, uh, let a mother have her son. You let a brother keep his, uh, keep his brother. Oh, you know? and yeah. And that, that struck me. And uh, this was uh, like, I don't know, this is around Halo 5 time. And, and that hit me hard. And it was like, you know, this is why I'm here. You know, the, I have a, a video on my Twitter uh, that kind of shows, you know, it's like a trailer of like my journey. And that League of Legends post and how much people hated me and they said, you know, you're not going to make it. And they said, you're, you're making a terrible life decision. Someone was going to call the child protective services on me because I was quitting my job. So many different things. Yeah. And, and, and I do this because I want to tell people that, you know, even though what you love is hard, you can do it if you just work hard enough and, and put the time in. You know, everyone says luck is a factor. Yes, luck is a factor. But the more time you put in, the more chances you have to get lucky, right? So yeah. that's what I'm trying to kind of push my message out to people doing this. Awesome. Okay. I, I thought of two things just while you're talking then. Yeah. Uh, so one is if you were giving advice to younger, like younger kids, because uh, so how old were you when you were starting this content creation? Oh, so, uh, gosh, 2014. I'm 33 now. I can't do math. It, it, I would say like around what 26 or something 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 like that like late 20s yeah yeah yeah. all right so yeah because so right now i think that there's a lot because of you know generational differences there's a lot of kids that are in that you know mid-teens 15 to 20 that Mm -hmm. are trying to stream and instead of maybe getting like a part-time job and doing like the blockbuster route that you were in these are kids that are like trying to do the streaming stuff so if you think about those kids is there any advice that you think would be, you know, that, and when I say this, uh, I don't mean it to be rude to other people, but something that they might not have heard before that you think yeah. would be good advice to them to help them with their streaming or help them with their mindset around streaming to of be course. successful. Well, the number one thing is it's a roller coaster, and, and they've probably heard that before, but it's a very important fact to bring up. You're not going to be shroud day one. You're not going to be shroud year one. Uh, you could be, but, um, in terms of like the actual tips, I think TikTok is a huge platform right now. And I, and I hate to say it because I hate the app, but it's, it's really good for building an audience right now. I think everyone should be on TikTok or Instagram reels. Either one of those, very, very good for building your, your brand. Um, streaming on Twitch at day one. If I was to do what I did in 2014 now, I would fail. To be honest, yeah. um, it's not happening because, I mean, it, it may be a little bit easier because of affiliate, but also I, I, I see, I can't even say it's not happening because that goes against, I, I, I it's possible, mm-hmm. but it's going to take, it's going to take a lot of work and it's going to take a lot of branding on other platforms. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube is a huge one. Um, and, and we can get into that whole discussion about YouTube or Twitch. I don't have an answer for that right now. I I'm still looking into stuff. I don't know if what's going to happen, but regardless content is king. You need to get in and make content. You need to be yourself. No one can be you, period. If yeah. you are just you and you don't, you stop trying to be like Tim the Tap Man or you stop trying to be Nick Merckx, be you, period. Yeah. You will have people that want to watch you. And that, that's what it comes down to. Just be consistent with what you're doing. You're, and I'm not saying schedule because that's been said before. This is different. I'm saying attitude. Yeah. Go on with the same attitude every day. If you're an open book like me, my chat knows some days I'm going to, it's going to look like I'm on my period. That's just how it goes. Some days, I'm, <laughs> some days I'm really annoying. And I, and I no offense, <laughs> uh, not saying that women are annoying, but like, no, I know what you, you mean, know, but... some days I, I am agitated and I don't want to, you know, but I, I'm who I am every day. I don't try to fake. I don't try to do any of that. Yeah. I, I would recommend people to do that. You know? Awesome. I love that. Okay. And um, this is something that I was thinking about just while you were saying that is, um, do you think that there's a point where it's okay to give up? Oh, I, I, can't, I can't say if you want it bad enough, there is no giving up. You find ways. 
Mm -hmm. Two years ago, I had to sell half of my possessions on eBay because it was rough again. Okay. No one knows that. You know that now. (laughs) And everyone listening knows that. But it got rough again. But I I was okay because I had stuff around the house that I didn't use. And I just sold it. And I, you know, I did some uh, buying and selling. I kind of did something on the side to supplement. Um, people don't believe this, but full-time streaming has been my only income raising four children. This is all I got. Mm-hmm. My fiance, uh, going to be wife soon, does not make a lot of money at all. Um, she, she makes good money, but not really that, you know. Yeah, um, so, four kids and two, two adults. Yeah, right. I get it. Yeah. yeah, so so this has been my only income. So the eBay thing was something like, okay, we got to do something else here. Let me go do eBay. I do stupid things like, yeah, I did this thing called the uh, circle of life haircut where it's basically like a strip of hair from my beard up through the middle of my head. It looked <laughs> so stupid, but I got six grand to do that. And that's kind of the things that kind of keep me afloat. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just about getting through the hard times and just pushing through and figuring out ways to keep going. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And I love that because I think one of the things that I get when I talk to a lot of content creators, um, just in, in general, right. Is a lot of content creators at the moment, regardless of age, are at a point where they're very good at asking for things. Yes. But, n- but not very good at taking a step back and and trying to add value themselves or right. being able to take um, responsibility for where they're at. Right. You know? And and what one of the things suggestions that I give to a lot of people is that if you can, financial freedom is going to give you more time, effort, um, you know, passion for this gaming and for content creation um, to to be able to do that. So why I say that is, you know, you made the decision to do something full time, but you followed it through with actions. Like you said, times got tough. You sold things on eBay. You did what you had to in the background to make it work for that time being. Right. And the whole time you remained optimistic and positive, but you were willing to get to do that. Right. right? That and, and your first action, I don't, I don't know if it was, so correct me if I'm wrong, but your first instance wasn't times are getting rough. I need to ask someone for something. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, you can't, you can't, you can't like, you, you're right. There's so many people with like donation goals and they, they'll like say, Ooh, rent, you know, this month. I, I to, no offense to anyone that does that. Please don't take this the wrong way. I don't like that because I feel like that doesn't give your community anything that just takes from your community. Mm-hmm. I, I, I spin it like, Hey guys, I'm going to look like a complete idiot. All you have to do is give me or give me this. And I don't ask for that. The, yeah, the yeah. chat will come up with the goal themselves. That's literally what happens. So it's very kind of off my shoulders type deal. Like I'll say, they'll say, Hey, we want you to cut your, in-. like I was fully bald on my entire head, my eyebrows and my, everything was gone. <laughs> okay. I look like my daughter, <laughs> she got so scared, but I look like a complete idiot. I, I will do anything for my family first of all, but, but you know, you know where halo has been at recently. It's, it's hard. It's hard. It is. But, uh, you know, I, my chat will say, we want you to shave your eyebrows off and your beard and all this. And I'll say, well, what are you going to do for me? You know, like, what, what do you mean? Like, what, you know, what are we going to, are we going to set a goal here? What are we going to do? And the yeah. chat will come up with the goal and then we'll have a negotiation process. Yeah. And, yeah. and then I'll say, okay, I'll do this for that, whatever. But it's not always about that. It, you know, I'll do things like, like little goals for them uh, in other sort of ways. Like, you know, we hit this goal, I'll do a 24 hour or whatever. And it's not always monetary. You yeah. got to give back to your community period, because they are, you're not, they're not there for you. You're there for them, period. That there's no question about it. It's like, kind of like the uh, retail side of things. Like the customer is always right. Mm -hmm. My, my chat is not customers. They are literally family to me and I'm there for them every day that they got out of work to be there to entertain them. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I love it. That was some really good, really good input. (laughs) Um, Okay. So I want to know like infinite you've uh, we want to talk about the mouse and keyboard side of things a little bit as well, because you got to play the the beta and you got to try out mouse and keyboard versus controller. Give me your opinion, your feeling, what you see happening with that. I'm very happy with uh, now. Okay. I just want to, I want to take that back. I'm not a hundred percent happy. I think that the game needs definite performance updates and I think it needs to be optimized a lot. But I'm happy at where controller is right now in terms of aim assist. I think the aim assist is perfect. There, mm-hmm. it, it, the battles, the one v ones feel very balanced. You know, um, on MCC, I have gotten used to you know losing my up close fights because it's just not going to happen unless I'm you know crazy. 
Uh, but you know, on infinite, I feel like with a little more optimization and a little more performance uh, updates will be very balanced, at least from, you know, what we've seen so far, mind you, I've only played 30 minutes of PVP because I was casting a uh, kill race for LVT. Yeah. So I haven't really played the PVP too much, but from what I've seen, I love the state where it's at. And I think I'm gonna be honest with you here, right here on divine mind in two years, there will be a top eight mouse and keyboard player in one of the top eight teams, 100%. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I'm, I'm, I love the fact that it's just a part of it because I think it just grows the population. It gives a, yeah. a it opens a new door that wasn't open <laughs> beforehand. So Very. it gets me, it gets me so hyped for the com- competitive side of things. Um, the balance is one thing, but I also think that like most things when it's at a competitive, uh, if we're talking about social, I think my opinion would be so slightly different. Okay. When you're talking about competitive, I don't think that, that there's ever a wrong move to make it more competitive, if that makes sense. Okay. So, so from my opinion, if you're looking at sports, okay, mm-hmm. most of the time with sports in the in in this in, in this generation, if you're looking at like a world record or something, a lot of the times world records get beat not just because of the person, but because of technology change, right. uh, an advancement in the way that we're training, or something like that. So, mm-hmm. if we have mouse and keyboard and we have controller, and one of them become and, and obviously like controller is probably the the biggest input right now for Halo, right? Yeah. Um, and let's say that that is dominant and it, and it, and it is, but in the next few years, uh, the way that mouse and keyboard players start developing starts becoming, you know, better than that. Right. Um, then I think that that is a, a good addition to the competitive scene. Um, then if you have mouse and keyboard players that work out a way to play, like develop a play style or something, and then that makes them slightly better than mouse and keyboard players. I only see it progressing the way that a competitive scene plays. So, mm-hmm. Um, I have I, I like that that is a part because it's it's bringing two scenes together to kind of be competitive against each other. Um, and I think that you know people are saying I don't like it because it's harder to beat mouse and keyboard players. You know I think that it's the exact same for mouse and keyboard players talking about controller players. So yeah, I talked about this the other day on Twitter. This is a big thing for me. This is actually a huge passionate topic of mine right now. Um, so I'll try not to go crazy, but go crazy. <laughs> Input between mouse and keyboard and controller will never be fully balanced. It is impossible. They have their strengths and they have their weaknesses. I propose the idea, like you just said, of building a team with those strengths and weaknesses in mind. You have one anchor player that's a keyboard and mouse player that sits back, let's say on midship, a red window, shooting P2, shooting carbine. You know, he's not gonna sit there the whole game, but you know what I mean? Like he's an anchor, he's an anchor player. And then the rest of them are control players. You could do that. But my biggest thing is I feel like when people lose fights nowadays, I feel like just this generation, my many generations, they, they look for the first thing to blame why they lost. Why did I lose that fight? Oh, it's not my fault. It's because he's on controller or it's yeah. because he's on mouse and keyboard. They'll yeah. come up with some reason as to why they are losing. When if you upgrade your brain and you, and you, <laughs> you, you work your brain out, you'll understand that you are the reason and you need to figure out how to not let that happen again. Mm -hmm. The people just come up with the easiest excuse they can find. And that's why this debate will never end. But I mean, you can get it to be as balanced as possible. And three, four, three has said that that's exactly what they want to do. They're going to monitor it and balance it the best they can. And that's all we can really hope for. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about um, as far as like the maps that we've seen being hopeful for, new and other maps that are coming in and the way that that plays with mouse and keyboard versus controller uh right now these maps are i don't really like these maps to be honest. I, like they're cool free-for-all maps but i don't really like any of the maps that have been shown so far i, I don't i don't i am sure they have many many more and i'm excited for that but mm-hmm. i also didn't like the halo 3 map that was shown in the beta I, I don't remember the name of it but it was like a beach and a, and a base i didn't like that one either so like i think that they've got other ones that are going to be good yeah. Um, and as for mouse and keyboard right now on those maps, I think it's fine. I think it's like a decent distance so that I, you know, I can kind of sit back and put shots in and it's not too close range. Uh, all of them are really, really good. Uh, my favorite map out of the three would probably be recharge right now. I think, I think if that's the one, um, the one with the camo on the bottom of the map, I yeah. like that one the best. Um, but I, I need better maps and, uh, hopefully with forge, we've got a great creative community here. When oh, yeah. Forge finally releases, I think we're going to see some big maps because 
People don't understand forge got delayed, but that is literally supposed to be a level design program at your fingertips. Yep. Imagine what the halo community is going to do with that. Oh, for sure. I just hope that they have a really good way of implementing that. And also I think, you know, like seasonally, the maps need to rotate more eff eff efficiently. That'd be awesome. Like, if you, like Halo, Halo 5 is a, is a terribly good example of how bad uh, it can be if it doesn't get updated. They, I don't think I've ever seen a new, I don't think, I can't remember the last time I saw a new community map get added. You know, like <laughs> the, the community maps have been the same four or five community maps. Or Halo 5, so sad. <laughs> yeah, it's a well, good game, but it just got dropped. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And, and I think that, it's good seeing what they're doing with MCC and, and uh, some of the maps that they're bringing in like that. But I really hope there is a maybe even a playlist that can be even rotated weekly. I'm hoping there's like forum discussions for it as well so that people can be like, no, 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 we really like this map. And mm -hmm. you know, if it, then if it goes into social well and people are enjoying it social, maybe then they try it in competitive as well. And then if it goes yes. into competitive well, they start bringing it into like HCS. I think that like they need to be really open to that kind of dynamic so that we're not just reliant on what gets released and shipped with the game or what is, 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 um, you know, actually released by three, four, three, um, we'll, we'll, you know, and I think that's what they're hoping for by making it, giving it so much optimization and giving the yeah. community so much control. So, you know, I, but I think that'll be a really key component of whether that forge map integration with play is going to be successful or not. Uh, I love that. I love that idea. The the idea that you just had where you kind of, you know, put it as a community playlist then put it into social, then move it over to competitive. Then I love that idea because that's basically what we did with Halo three. We had like the versions that you see version one through eight, yeah. were all like just a bunch of players sitting together and testing these game types over and over and over and over again. Yeah. So that's perfect. I mean, you have the community involved, you know, set up a forum. I liked yeah. it. Yeah, I think so. And then you can kind of vote, right? You can say like yeah. this week we have six maps that we're going to do. And then you kind of just keep phasing out three of them. You know, mm -hmm. like, okay, these three got terrible votes, but these three were good. We're going to put three new maps in. How do mm -hmm. these three compare to those three? And you do it for maybe a month. And then at the end of it, the three at the top of three that we put into the social playlist. And, you know, there's lots okay. of ways where you can get lots of, uh, you know, uh, and there's and there's so many YouTubers and there's so many content creators that are going to like love that and want to yeah. create content around that. So oh, yeah. It just means that, you know, more people are going to be able to see and watch and interact with it. And then, you know, you're going to get, and uh, that's going to build a community around that as well. You know, yeah. so uh, I find, I'm really looking forward to that. As far as um, content creation integrated with Halo Infinite, what's, do you have, do you have any hopes for ways that content creators can like effectively um, play and interact with the game that's going to help grow their uh, communities? Uh, just, you know, I, I played, I don't know how they'd implement this. I just think it's kind of cool. I played yeah. New World recently and they had this like Twitch integration where it showed that they were streaming and then mm -hmm. it showed how many viewers they had. And then you could click that and open it in game. Um, I, I think that'd be kind of cool now for an FPS where you can kind of stream snipe or whatever, you know what I mean? Get involved in that. That might be a little weird, but yeah. I just like the idea of like the Twitch account being connected somehow yeah. so that people know you're alive and yeah. they'll be like, Oh, I want to check this person out. You know, he's got this many viewers. I think the viewer count is a big thing too, yeah. because you know, us with the, you know, whatever viewer account you have, people like different viewer accounts. So they like, some people like the little viewer accounts. Some people like the bigger viewer accounts. Um, so yeah, that, I think that would be phenomenal if they could add some sort of inter integration with that. Yeah. Imagine if it was even just like a little red live button. Yeah. Like, something something like, that. like that. Yeah. This person's, this person's currently streaming and then you can go on, you can find it yourself. Doesn't even have to open, you know, you know, I don't know lots of, I love that though. And I think that's a big conversation that needs to happen. I agree. Uh, regularly. You know what I love, I love that this is a live service. Because like the fact that it's a live service, all of this stuff can be added. And yeah. I, I think I, I'm going to give away my content here. Okay. Don't steal it. Nobody steal it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm going to do like a, a monthly thing where these are the things that I would love to see in infinite coming up next season or whatever coming up in, you know, next month, I'm going to do like a thing where I kind of put my ideas out there. And if, and, you know, Halo takes it, they take it. If they don't, they don't. And I would love to honestly see other content creators do the same just yeah. so we have we get things added because it's a live service. You can add things whenever, whenever you want. It's not going to be like Halo Five. That's the great thing. Ten years of this game is a yeah. long time. It is, and and but yeah, you know the one thing that, that we lacked in the past is just that transparency and and yes. this is what we're changing. This is what we're doing. But with it being live service, I think that even just the rate at which they can make changes, um, hopefully that's enough transparency. I don't. We don't even need them to necessarily be tweeting out all of the. Okay, we hear you on this. We're going to make this change. We're going to do whatever. Right. 
it's just like okay this is coming in holy shit that came in fast yeah, that's cool, right? and yeah. by the time you're getting used to that it's like oh and we have this other thing and you know they're listening to uh, so i'm super excited i'm so so excited i am so excited man 93 well, days left oh boy 93 days 93 that's days it. left <laughs> man <laughs> outside of uh, outside of everything we've kind of talked about like what, what are you most looking forward to for halo infinite Oh, dude, I, you know what, you know what people loved back in the day for Halo 5? Everyone knows me for this. It's kind of odd because every time I go into like a stream or, oh, I used to watch you play Halo 5 free for alls, Halo 5, Halo Infinite free for all ranked is going to be so fun. I, I cannot wait to jump in there and just get you know, the highest rank that possible, whatever that's going to be. And, <laughs> and just kind of make that content in my stream. I think that's a really, it's fun. To, it's a, it's the best, I think, interaction wise, because yeah. you don't have to really call out. You're just kind of playing free for all. And I think the stream really enjoys it. So uh, hopefully that's kind of something I'm looking forward to. Obviously, I really want to beat the campaign. Um, but like the biggest thing, okay, I already named two. The biggest thing is casting the LVT tournaments when they come out or whoever wants to have me on casting yeah. tournaments for Halo Infinite and just building my knowledge of the game and getting better at casting Infinite is going to be the best part. I'm, I'm so excited about that. Yeah, well, I'm excited to see what you do. <laughs> I love it. I, 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 this podcast has given me so much um, excitement and so much motivation to keep working on on everything that I'm doing in the background because you know I get to talk to someone like you and I get I get that little bit of hype. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, man. Like it, 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 when when other people aren't working, you got to be working. Like that's that's how you get there. That you know, obviously take breaks and stuff like that. But yeah, dude, it's all about content is king and. And to be honest with you, I might sound like this guy that, you know, I, I struggle with it too. You know, I can bring up my kids as an excuse, but it isn't, it, you know, I, I need to do better in my content, like TikTok and Instagram are apps that I don't like, but I, I got to use them more. You know, they're so good for growth. And when Halo Infinite comes out, like you said, that new generation is going to be all over it. And yeah. that's when you grow, you can literally explode on TikTok. You literally can. It's crazy. Yeah. It's the, it's the way that the, the algorithm uh, works is, is great. That's uh, so, you know, we were talking off, off, uh, off the recording before uh, that you hadn't had a chance to watch any of the podcasts. Make the first one you watch mint blitzes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Cause we had a really good conversation about how the algorithm works for different social platforms, advice that he'd give for people to do it. And I can't believe that the, you know, it's, it's one of those, I think it's a gem on our channel that uh some people might look back on when mint blitz blows up even more if they get oh, the yeah. opportunity to find it and they'll be like wow this this guy this long ago was talking about these things and um so it's, it's a gem i would definitely recommend watching that because it'll even help you with looking at content creation and on those other apps um in a more effective way because yeah he even talks about things like this is this is a good example if you look at our instagram account like divine minds instagram account it's just memes right it's memes memes yeah clips that type of thing and we, we talk about with him like he doesn't he, he, don't, he doesn't necessarily like doing the campaign clips that he's been doing he's yeah. a montager at heart but he makes the campaign clips because he's building his audience so that when he goes back to doing montage clips that's he's smart. got a bigger audience right yeah that's smart exactly the same thing for us what's the easiest thing for me to be able to do to grow our audience organically and and it's to do with halo and that's post memes because it's what the younger generation wants right that's awesome but, yeah but then every now and again, when I reach out and I post a clip from somebody that I think is a really good content creator, that slowly gets more and more attention based yeah. on the, uh, the, the organic growth we've had from posting memes. You know, so I think some people kind of misplace that uh, and, and don't realize how effective it can be to just be built, finding what's going to work and build your growth in, a, in that niche. So for us, like Halo and, and content creation. Yeah. Um, and then if you're actually building that audience so that when you when you flip back to what you're really trying to achieve, you've got that growth there. That's um, so true. And every app, the thing is too, is every app, like you said, is different. They have different algorithms. Like TikTok's app, they send it to one group of people. Then, you know, if it does well with that group of people, the close group, they send it to a large group and then they send it to a large group. And that's how, you know, a clip goes viral. And that's what I learned from TikTok. I didn't really know. I've been researching mostly TikTok, but yeah. everything is different. And that's what's crazy to me. Is there's so many different platforms and they all have different systems and it's nuts so okay you've mentioned you've mentioned like uh instagram and tiktok a few times but when you think about content creation where do you think is your biggest uh like ability to move forward something that could have the biggest impact on, on your youtube content. definitely youtube yeah. yeah i mean tiktok is huge but i i think like youtube is a little bit less volatile i think it's more stable and it's more stable growth uh so i think youtube like just posting once a week is, is very very important it's just you gotta 
figure out that audience retention, which is my biggest problem, like keeping people on the little tips and tricks that they do to psychologically keep you on the screen. Um, also working on that with casting. So it's kind of like that, that mindset that's going to work for both, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the things that I, I, I need to get better with as well, even just with the podcast, right? Like, yeah. you know, one, one of the things that should be at the beginning of every one of our podcasts is something that we like a clickbaity thing, something that we talk about at the end here. Like I need you to say, you know, get angry at me and be like, I'm going to punch you in the head. The first time I see you can't believe you'd ask me that. You know what I mean? And then right, we, right. at the beginning of the podcast, if people want to watch it and find out where you yeah. start. You know, I like, just learned that too. That whole beginning at the like cutting, look, doing a clip, like that big part of the thing, and then putting it at the beginning. I just learned the same thing just now. It's crazy, isn't it? Like just evolving, just learning. I, just, I love content creation so much and casting. Definitely, right. man, one hundred percent. But so we've got. Uh, I think we've, we're pretty much at an hour, and I think I could talk to you all day. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I feel the same. Honestly, it's been fun. It's been really yeah, fun. yeah. And I mean, I, I've got a few questions I like to ask as we kind of, of wrap up. Um, but I know that you were hoping to, to stream around four as well, so I'll give you enough time to be able to do both. Um, yeah, listen, if you don't, if you don't end this on time, I was, so I can get on stream, I'm going to punch you at the first event. So just be careful, okay? You got to. Perfect. Quick. That's at the front of the, that's <laughs> at the front of this podcast now, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. So the, the first question is, uh, about health and fitness, right? So big part about divine mind, I'll give you the quick spiel is, uh, that we want to really change the negative stereotypes around gamers. So uh, as gamers, we don't see it too much ourselves, but if I talk to any part of the population, generally an older po- part of the population, uh, and I ask them about a gamer, what, what do you think of a gamer? First thing that comes to your mind and it's a negative stereotype. Yes. Uh, two, two parts about that is that you know, a large portion of that is unfortunately accurate, um, mm. that, the, what people think of. Uh, but the other part is that not everybody is like that. And, right. um, and so we uh, have got a really big, strong, and, uh, you know, our big focus is changing that stereotype and, um, and making gamers more professional, you know, more uh, easy, to, easy to watch, easy to talk to, and easier to want to be like. You know, so I think you're a great example of that. Someone that people can watch and be like, oh, I want to be more like that person. Younger kids are looking at them and being like, oh, they're healthy, they're fit, they're articulate, you know, they're making money and they've got a family and, you know, it's all these positive things. It's not, right. okay, these, this is an addictive, uh, person that's addicted to gaming, right? right. Um, so for yourself, uh, is health and fitness something that is important? Is it something that you should be better at? Like, where do you kind of sit with that? My, uh, so my the fiance is, is she gets me on this every time because, um, I think that me getting to my goal weight and me being fit, I'm not very fit at the moment. Uh, but me getting to my goal weight and me being fit is the most important thing to me, but I just can't commit to it. And that sounds really bad because I can commit to anything and I put my mind to something and I crush it. I've lost weight many times in the past. I I've, I've lost recently actually lost 35 pounds. I'm, I'm starting to creep back up a bit again. And, and, uh, it comes down to like making that decision, that lifestyle change. And I guess I've done it, but it, it just sticking with it for me is, is, uh, has been really, really rough, but yeah. I know that it's literally the number one thing that's going to make me, or that's going to kind of bleed out into everything else and, and, you know, prepare me for success. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, we'll talk about this another time. Um, yeah. cause I don't want to, I don't want to add too much to it, but, um, just, that sounds like an education thing right okay. uh it sounds like if you if we i, I can i'll help you with it a little bit off if you want if you're absolutely, interested absolutely absolutely because one of the things i think of um way like weight fluctuation especially is an education thing you can get to a point in life where like you can live consistently happy without making any really major changes when you understand how weight why weight fluctuation is a thing right, right. Um, and so we'll talk about that another time, but that's really good input. And it's the same thing for like everybody that's listening to this, that maybe is in that same kind of, um, point where, you know, you, you feel like, okay, I really want to focus on my health and fitness and you put the effort in and you lose that weight. And then, you know, school gets hard. There's a lot bunch of exams. Mm-hmm. Your girlfriend breaks up with you, the your dog dies, you know, whatever yeah. it is. Right. Yeah. And, and it sends you on that upward trajectory again. And then six months later, you're like, oh man, I got to lose weight again. And then you do it. Um, so that isn't unusual. Lots of people are at that point. Um, but one of the things that I encourage everybody to do, anyone that's watching this, you can reach out to me in the DMS and I'll, I've got all the time in the world to talk about it. Um, but if you educate yourself more to, become, to create a lifestyle that is going to be consistent for you, you might not lose that 35 pounds as quickly as you have in the past, but you're not going to have the bounce back six months after this. Right. So, um, everyone reach out to me and we'll talk more about it another time. Uh, when I, when, if you want to. Um, but that, that's awesome. I love hearing that because I think it's really important, especially for a younger generation to, to know that 
they're not, it's not just them having that problem. Right. Um, but that's really awesome. So if you were thinking about like your health and fitness, do you have some stuff that you enjoy doing? Like do you have some training that you like doing? Um, or, you know, is there any type of, like you said, you play basketball. Is that the main source of like sport for yourself? Or? Oh yeah. Like it would be basketball. I think drumming would definitely do it for me. Like I can jam on a song and literally my shirt would be soaked after like three songs. Like I love drumming. And yeah. it's, like you said, it's something that you do that you don't even really need to think about and you're, yeah. you're exercising. Yeah. Cool. I love that. Um, there's so another question that I like to ask is uh, just being really goal centered, goal focused. Um, have you got some goals that you're kind of focusing on, like maybe before Infinite or like when Infinite comes out that you can share with uh, with everyone? So I don't like to set number goals because I feel like that kind of puts a stress on me that I don't need. I think organically I'll just grow. I like to set goals for where I want to be personally, and one of the number one goals is that I want to at least have, uh, you know, start. YouTube, a consistent one video a week, at least. And then on those social media platforms like TikTok and Instagram reels, which is easy because it's just a copy and paste to both of them right now. Um, I can, which you shouldn't do, by the way, don't listen to my advice. You should have separate content on both, but uh, you know, I can put at least one of those up a day. And uh, I would like to have that consistent to infinite and then kind of bump it up when infinite comes out. That would, that's the, that's the goal right now. And that's kind of what I'm trying to achieve. It just comes down to making a schedule that works around the kids and works around when um, my fiance gets home and all of that and then stream as well. So I understand, but that's a good insight as well for everybody like content creation and doing that and multitasking that is difficult. <laughs> it's hard. Yes, very. Yes. Very. And it's, and it's really hard to be consistent with that for a long time. And that's what a lot of these apps and everything require is that, you know, you've got, you've got to be consistently doing it. So yes. that's awesome. Uh, and then I always love to ask this question, thinking about like maybe five to 10 years from now in the future, What's like the dream reality for you look like? How, what changes have you, you know, you got, you mentioned that you're renting, you want to get a dog eventually and have your own place. Like, is, is that something that's like, a, uh, you know, what's the dream reality look like for you in five years from now? So, so yeah, so we're renting out a house right now, which is very, very expensive. I'm basically paying a mortgage right now. So I would like to have a house at some point. Uh, I would like to uh, be financially free. And that's like, that's literally, I want to be able to, have all my bills come out automatically of my account and not have to worry about there not being enough money for that bill at that point and having to pay it like a week later. I don't yep. want to worry about that anymore. Um, that's, that's it. Uh, I would like to have a Tesla that that's kind of like my big, it's a, like my little kind of mini goal that yep. I really, it's not a mini goal, but I really want it. Yep. Uh, just kind of like say, Oh, I got one. I finally made it. What would you um, get? Tesla would you get? Uh, I, the big, big one is the Tesla Roadster. The, the, the one that's not out yet, that would be like the main, but if I have to get a model S then I'll get a model S uh, I I'm kind of, I'm kind of down with whatever. I just, to be honest with you, it sounds so stupid. I like the Tesla cause of the big screen. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds so dumb. Actually, your game, like, that's fine. Yeah. That's actually why I got the, the Z flip three because of the big screen that comes that you can flip it and it, it, it has a big screen. Uh, I just, I like big screens. I, I'm a techie guy, but uh, and a gamer. Yes. Um, but so yeah, those goals. And then to be honest, like fitness, I'm being serious here. Fitness and happiness is, is a big goal for me. And it sounds so bad because that is literally like the, my number one goal, but I'm not doing enough to make it happen. So I'm kind of just like talking about it. Talk, talk, talk. The thing that I'm all against, I'm very against that though. Talking, talking, talking and not doing is that I'm against it. So it's a battle within right now that I will win. I will win it. And, uh, and that's, that's one of the big goals too, is to be fit. Cause I want to be on that casting stage one day and I want to wear a nice, nice outfit and look good, you know? Yeah. Get all, get all suited up and, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and have that confidence. It, it's so true though. Like so much comes with fitness that you can't get in any other way. And like for someone that's got such a great mindset, like you, it's only going to push you to that next level. You know, like when, when you feel happy, confident, healthy, fit, yes. all of those things compound. And it's like, it's almost like, instant karma that you bring yeah. to yourself, right like i love and care about myself so much that everything else is going to fall into place around that yep it okay. all bleeds so. out that's what I, I love about it dude yeah. yeah yeah definitely so the last last question and then I'll, I'll let you go and start getting ready for stream is uh i generally ask just to keep the conversation going and yeah. continue the podcast uh is there someone that you would like to kind of tag in or you think i should have on the podcast uh, that maybe i wouldn't have a part of my network already um, that you think would, you know, has got a good story, uh, would add value to the conversation, you know, something like that. Oh, that's a, that's a rough one. Um, maybe, Oh, there's a couple, I uh, maybe Nated is have you, you haven't done Nated yet, right? Maybe Nated. I think his story is great because he's the one player that has never won an event 
but he's mm-hmm. played second place so many times. And he's one of the, he, he made he made a lot of people's top 25 lists. So I would love yeah. to hear his thoughts on that. And, you know, he's going through a lot right now as well. So maybe he kind of talks about that. I'm not sure if he would, but regardless, you know, um, I think it'd be a good story to hear, you know, his past and then where he thinks he's going to be in the future. Cause he did mention competing a couple of times. So yeah. Yeah. I'd love to see that. Awesome. Cool. Well, I'll reach out to him. If you, if you've got uh, the ability to reach out to him as oh, well, I will. yes. Yeah, and just definitely. let him know, all right, Liam from Divine Mind, he does his podcast thing, whatever. Get his get get that in his brain so he's not, you know, looking at this weird DM from the Divine yeah, Mind. Definitely, yeah. We'll yeah, do, exactly. do that right after this. So that would that would be really awesome. But um, thanks, dude, so much for making the time to chat today. Um, for everybody that's watched the podcast this far, you're, you're honestly the reason why we do this, you know, both active and myself. You know, we, we want to entertain, we want to bring you guys content that you're going to enjoy. Uh, and speaking of which, if you go down to the description of this video, all of the links for Active are going to be there. Make sure that you check out his Twitch. He's, he's sitting at, I think he got like 55.6K followers on, on Twitch. Um, so definitely make sure you're watching that out live. Like you probably gathered from this, the energy and everything that he brings through his stream is just super entertaining. And it's worth even just having on in the background to keep your energy high while you're doing other things. Uh, YouTube, I think he's sitting just under 4K. So we've got to, you've got to jump in there help support the content that he's going to be act- actively <laughs> putting up on there uh, <laughs> weekly. And then I know you've got TikTok and Instagram as well. So uh, I think we've got a link tree for you that'll be in the description. Make sure you check that out. Show him some love and get around the content because there's uh, a lot going to be coming in Halo Infinite that I'm sure everybody's going to want to see. So I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Yeah. So, and before we finish up, anything else you want to quickly mention, talk about, add in that we, we haven't, we haven't been able to speak about yet. Uh, just, uh, just to, you know, thank you for, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, it is, it is awesome. I love speaking about myself, <laughs> but no, but honestly, I appreciate it. And I'm really excited for infinite people like you that have worked really hard to kind of like build, uh, build a content uh, creation audience. And, and when infinite comes out, you know, you'll definitely see those numbers rise and I'm really excited. And now, of course I will help as much as I can and we'll help each other. Everyone will help each other. And I I'm excited to see where we all end up. Um, we are very, very committed audience or committed uh, group of people, the halo oh, community. Sure. So we Definitely. are going to do well and I'm excited yeah. about that. Yeah. 100% man. And I'm going to, I'm not even kidding while we were talking, I wish I could share my screen but i won't because i have some other stuff open but uh that no one no one should be seeing and uh but i've got a note here for a uh, halo jam session <laughs> oh i like to wait for that i hope that actually happens because i would be so down yeah 100 I, I made some notes under it which is like things i have to look at doing which is uh maybe leasing equipment so that we can do it at a land and no one has yeah. to do anything yeah, i can just literally cool. say i'll like just dm everybody and be like guys i need you to come here at this time trust me it's going to be something cool and then there's just going to be equipment speakers everything that everyone needs just sit oh. down and jam and hang out together i so, love that dude that yeah. sounds great yeah. Uh, but are you going to be at the first land? Do you think? In- oh yeah, I'm gonna. I, I will drag myself there. I'm going there. Yes, 100. percent will be there. I don't care what needs to happen. I'm going. <laughs> All right. Well, I owe you a beer or whatever you drink. Drink of choices at that Definitely, point. man. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I hang out. But uh, again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you again for everybody that's watching this. I will see everybody on the next episode.